Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over the transitivity axiom of preference relations. So as you'll recall, we're currently in a series of lectures going over the four preference rules that we need our individuals to have in our game theoretical models for the expected utilities to all work out properly. Last time we went over completeness, today we're going to go over transitivity. And remember that someone who has complete and transitive preferences is rational by our game theoretical definition of rationality. So what's the definition of transitivity? Well, for any three outcomes, x, y, and z, if x is preferred to y and y is preferred to z, then x must be preferred to z. Let's look at what this means graphically. So here we have the same three outcomes from our video on completeness. We have winning a million dollars, winning zero dollars, and dying a painful death. You should be able to remember that this is currently an incomplete preference relation because we don't have anything here. And we don't know what's going on between winning a million dollars and dying a painful death. But let's assume that this individual is rational. So they have a complete preference relation and a transitive preference relation. They just haven't yet filled this in yet. So what needs to go here if this person is, has transitive preferences? Well, if they prefer winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars and prefer winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, then it's only logical that this person also must prefer winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. I think that is a pretty straightforward concept to understand. That's what our definition of transitivity is telling us. But there's also a couple of implications that, while aren't very obvious at first, once you learn what they are, they're very straightforward as well. So let's look at one of those things. Let's say that this person, instead of preferring winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, now is indifferent between winning zero dollars and dying a painful death. Well, if this person also prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, then again, it's only logical if they prefer winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. And we can also do something with indifference all the way around. So this person is indifferent between winning a million dollars and indifferent between winning zero dollars and dying a painful death. So this is going to imply that this person is indifferent between winning a million dollars and dying a painful death. Basically what we're trying to avoid here is something called a preference cycle, which is what we now see on our screens. Let's see what this means. Well, if this person prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, and they prefer winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, but they also prefer dying a painful death to winning a million dollars, that's really going to make you scratch your head and, and make you wonder if that makes sense. Because this is, as you see by looking at the arrows, a cycle. It goes around in a circle. This person does not have any pr most preferred outcomes, doesn't have any least preferred outcomes. Everything just goes around and around and around in a circle. The reason that this causes huge problems when we're trying to solve game theoretical models is that eventually we need to assign expected utilities to all of these outcomes. So let's start at the top. Let's just call this a three for winning a million dollars. If this person prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, then whatever expected utility we put here has to be less than three, so let's just call it two. And if this person prefers winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, then whatever expected utility we have here must be less than two, so maybe it's a one. But if they display this preference cycle, then this expected utility here, this one has to be greater than this three, which is obviously not true. And in fact, whatever expected utility that we would put here has to somehow simultaneously be less than two, but greater than three, and no numbers actually exist that are like that. So that's going to cause huge, pro huge problems, which is why we can't have transitivity, or excuse me, we can't have intransitive preferences uh, in our models. So basically what we're going after here is something called an ordering. This is an example of a linear ordering. This is an example of a weak ordering. Uh, in ordering is basically just a list of outcomes in a manner that everything listed higher than anything else is preferred to those lower things. So this person prefers A to everything else and least prefers E to everything else. And you know they, they prefer B to C, D, and E, but not to A, and so forth. That's, that's pretty straightforward. And someone who can display an ordering like this, or the weak ordering that we'll get to in a second, by definition has a complete and transitive preference relation, provided they've put all of the outcomes somewhere on a list. This is called a linear ordering because we only have one slot per line. So we just have A, B, C, D, and E all going down in a line like that. That means there is no indifference here. So if someone has a, an ordering like this, then we're fine. We can use this. We can solve game theoretical models like this. That's fine. It's also fine if they have a weak ordering here. So this is a weak ordering. It's called a weak ordering because we see indifference on the last line here. So this person prefers B to D and B to A and B to C, B to C also prefers D to A and D to C, and is indifferent between A and C. This is also fine in our game theoretical models. This is just saying that this person is indifferent between these two outcomes. And in fact, we've seen something like this before. This was in a game of Battle of the Sexes, where if we look at player one's outcomes, this is his most preferred outcome, this is his second most preferred outcome, and he's indifferent between his least preferred outcomes here. And we sort of see that this is the same thing going on here. He's got one outcome here, one outcome here, and indifference here. 
basically what we've seen before and it's going to work out completely fine. We can use weak orderings, uh, we can have actors have weak orderings when we're looking at game theoretical models, that's fine. As long as you can produce some sort of ordering, we're fine on rationality. Um, to get to plausibility, is this a plausible assumption? Do people actually have transitive preferences? Well, I think we should certainly hope so. And I think that if you're talking to someone, maybe you're discussing their favorite movies, and they tell you that they prefer movie X to movie Y, movie Y to movie Z, and movie Z to movie X, I think if you were to point out this to them, to say, hey, you displayed a preference cycle, and that really doesn't make any sense, they would immediately stop and, and rethink what they had just said, because they, I think they would straightforwardly understand that what they're saying doesn't make any sense at all. So I think out of all four of these assumptions that we have when we're, we're going over the models, um, I think transitivity is the least heroic of them to make. I think that basically everyone uh, should display transitive preferences, and if they don't, that's just really puzzling, and I'm, I'm not sure you could easily find someone who would display intransitive preferences. Now, that's not the case with all of these preference rules, and in fact, when we get to the next video, which will be on independence over lotteries, we'll see that, in fact, that independence over lotteries is very tricky, and that people don't actually display independence over lotteries. So we'll, we'll discuss that in the next video. Join me then.